Folks, today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott pardoned a white racist, a white nationalist, a white supremacist. His name is Daniel Perry. He's a former U.S. Army sergeant. He was convicted of murdering a 2020 Black Lives Matter protester. And that protester actually happened to be white. Abbott's decision comes after the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles voted unanimously, unanimously on Thursday to recommend a full pardon and the restoration of Perry's firearm rights. Okay, I'm sorry. D did I just tell y'all that the man was convicted of murdering somebody in 2020? Four years. D four years later. Now, Perry faced between five and 99 years in prison for fatally shooting 28-year-old Air Force veteran Garrett Foster at an Austin, Texas racial justice rally two months after the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. A judge sentenced Perry to 25 years in prison last year. 25 years. Last year. But here's Greg Abbott now deciding, oh no, no, go ahead and release him and give him his gun back. Now, this here is a tweet uh, that was posted by uh, Joaquin Castro, um, who is also a member of Congress. Y'all love this. You're going to love this here. Uh, before Daniel Perry murdered a veteran, he told a friend, I might go to Dallas to shoot looters. A year before, too bad we can't get paid for hunting Muslims. Jelana Jones, the representative in Texas out of Houston, joins us right now. Uh, representative Jones, uh, this is Greg Abbott. Now remember, Tucker Carlson demanded on Fox News that Greg Abbott pardon this racist Daniel Perry. And that's exactly what Abbott did. And the, part, the Board of Pardons, the reason it was unanimous, because Perry made it clear he wanted it done. Well, Roland, I will say this. The reason that they did that is because he appoints the people to the Board of Pardons and Paroles, which is why who the governor is matters. And they follow his orders on anything all the time. And that's, what expect, that's what's expected of them. But what we're not talking about is a man who, uh, who Daniel Perry murdered. He murdered Perry. He, mar he murdered Garrett Foster, who was a military veteran, who had a license to carry. And the truth is that Daniel drove his car into protesters two months after the George Floyd uh, murder and the rallies and, was, and, and what could have hurt other people and this other guy had a weapon, which he had a license to carry. He's a military veteran as well. And so, and again, as you mentioned, he tweeted all the time about how he hated black people, about how he hated Muslims. And, and then he, and he argued self-defense. Now, in my, in my day job, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. Well, you can't create a situation where you drive into a crowd of people who are lawfully protesting and then say you felt threatened because he could have killed people. So I put out a statement today because I was so angry. And you should know, I'm literally sitting in the Austin International Airport somewhere where I could find some quiet in the Barbara Jordan Airport. I literally just passed Governor Perry's mansion. And this man is going to be like open season on black people. And it's going to be open season on people who support black people because the the governor just said, it's lawful and I will pardon you. And I am terrified. In, in, fa in fact, Jolanda, in fact, Jolanda, this right here is the proclamation that he issued. He actually said, the Texas Board of Pardon and Paroles has conducted an exhaustive review of Daniel Scott Perry's personal history and the facts surrounding his shooting of Garrett Foster. And whereas... Both the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and Article 1, Section 23 of the Texas Constitution protects the right to keep and bear arms for, among other things, self-defense. And whereas Texas law consistent with those constitutional guarantees provides one of the clearest self-defense protections in the United States, blah, 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 blah. He goes, Daniel Scott Perry... Uh, while driving on a public road in Austin, slowed his vehicle as he rounded a corner onto Congress Avenue and encountered a group of protesters obstructing justice, 
traffic, and Daniel Scott Perry's car was immediately surrounded by aggressive protesters who rushed to obstruct, strike, pound, smash, and kick his vehicle. And Garrett Foster then approached within 18 inches of Daniel Scott Perry's car, confronted him, and brandished a collision to cost style rifle in the low ready firing position. Daniel Scott Perry fired his handgun at Garrett Foster to eliminate a perceived threat. Now, he goes on and on and on talking about, here's the whole deal. This is what got me. They completed an exhaustive review of his personal history. His writings are clear. He's an absolute racist. He actually texts somebody uh, that, uh, I'm going to pull up in a second, that, oh, that what he wanted to do was shoot, shoot protesters. He wanted to shoot, let me see if I can find, I want to find it, give me a second, where he actually said uh, he desired to, um, yeah, he had texted a friend, I will only shoot the protesters in front and push the pedal to the metal. This man is a murderer, and, and Texas Governor Greg, Greg Abbott today allowed a racist murderer to let be free and gave him the right to get his, get his guns back. It's, it's worse than a racist. He's anti-black. He's anti-black. And the jury vetted his self-defense claim. The jury listened to all the witnesses. The jury listens to all the testimony. And they threw that out. As I said before, in my day job, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. You do not get to claim self-defense when you create a situation where you, that you perceive danger. If you drive into protesters. He drove into protesters. The car wasn't surrounded by him. He created them being around him. So I'm, again, I'm terrified as a black woman, as a mother of a black son, uh, who's actually a man now. It terrifies me because if someone doesn't like the way my son looks, they could have texted friends, they could have posted things. And if he convinces people who are like-minded like him, i.e. Governor Abbott, and the Board of Pardons and Paroles, then they are putting themselves in the, the, I guess, the mind of that person. And it's terrifying. And it's very hard for me as a Black person in the legislature. We are under attack all the time. And the worst thing you can do to somebody is kill them. The biggest freedom you can take away from them is their life. But they believed that his right to carry a freaking gun was more important than the life that he took that's what it's like to be in Texas. If I were black, I wouldn't live in Texas. I wouldn't live in Texas, in Texas. And I'm fighting this day in and day out in the legislature. And I'm, I mean, I'm just heartbroken. I'm actually heartbroken. It is it's laughing in the face of the criminal justice system. The criminal justice system finally worked for us, which is very rare. And you take that from his family. You take that from black people who are fighting so hard, and our allies who are fighting so hard to show people that we deserve the rights just like everyone else. And Garrett Foster had a right to protest peacefully, and he was. And in fact, wait a minute, and here's the deal. This is also why, te- why Greg Abbott is trash. This is what Perry said to the investigator. Quote, I believe he was going to aim at me. I didn't want to give him a chance to aim at me. The gun, so Abbott is lying in his pardon. Foster never aimed at him. He did not. He killed him saying, oh, I thought he was going to aim at me, so therefore I killed him first. Right. But again, a jury listened to the testimony. They listened to the evidence, and they denied the self-defense, and they convicted him of murder. Now, the jury didn't convict him of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, which I think they should have. But this is just wrong. And in Texas, it's a wild, wild west. It is open season on us. And I'm terrified for black people generally and black men specifically. Well, and this is what you see when Republicans like Ronda Sanders pass bills saying, yeah, it's okay. Y'all can run with protesters. That's the whole deal. They despise Black Lives Matter protesters. And so Greg Abbott, again, is standing with a racist man who hates black people, who hates Muslims, and for the Republican Party, that's called a trifecta, and that's how he got a pardon. Representative Jones, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bottom line is, Reese, we got to understand what's going on here. This is not just in Texas. You got the Missouri governor who's talking about partnering a cop 
who was convicted. Yep. Uh, you got that, that case as well. You've got other examples. These Republican governors, they, want, they got no problem with these racists doing what they do, these mm -hmm. thug cops doing what they do, and they are going to use their power. And, they, and so the so-called law and order people only like law and order when it applies to black people and brown people. Well, and, and let me be clear, this message is to white folks. You will be the collateral damage of these white nationalists being deputized by the system. Garrett Foster was not a black man. He was a white man, a white military veteran, which is supposed to be the creme de la creme and the untouchable, the, the highest echelon of, of protection that's typically afforded in this country is to a white male veteran. They're supposed to be off limits, except for when you are protesting for the humanity of Black people, for Black Lives Matter. We've seen time and time again, Cal Rittenhouse was acquitted of killing white people. The person who killed Heather, I mean, Heather Heyer, who was, who was, who was protesting in Charlotte, anti-protesting in Charlottesville, a white woman. We've seen time and time again where white people standing on the side of humanity, particularly as it relates to Black people, are just as susceptible to the violence of white supremacists and their killers are walk scot-free just as much as they do when they kill black people. And so anybody who is concerned about the deputization of white nationalists, and that's exactly what this is, of course they did an exhaustive review. The fact that he did have those racist writings was the feather in his cap. It made it that much better because not only did they let somebody off to send the message that it's okay to do this, but they put a deputy, an armed deputy back on the street and they've empowered him and everybody else like him. If he had just been some old senile guy whose foot got stuck on the gas, he probably would still be in damn jail, but he isn't. Yep. He's a white nationalist. He's a foot soldier. <clears throat> and that's what's useful to them. And they are doing this across the country and they'll continue to do it. Yep. And it's not just black people who have to be worried. It's not just Latino people or people of color. It's white people too. Uh, Lauren, uh, Leah Greenberg of the Indivisible team, uh, she tweeted this. This is an open invitation to the worst people in the country, white supremacists, MAGA fanatics, and more, to commit violence knowing that MAGA governors like Greg Abbott will have their backs Vile, profoundly unjust, and deeply frightening. Yeah, well, to continue what Reese just said, uh, they're sending a very specific message uh, to anyone who supports Black Lives Matter that if somebody were to get into a situation where they get killed at a Black Lives Matter protest, uh, white or black, but in these cases, white, the Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, of course, was the other one, they're sending a very specific message that we will protect anyone who kills someone at one of these protests who's a BLM activist. I mean, they're, they're sending that specific message. And of course, this has a, a long history. Uh, when I think about Sharona Goodman and Cheney, when I think about James Swerg, when I think about Vi uh, Viola Liuzzo, uh, there's a history of that particular thing. Um, and, um, Frankly, it's kind of shades of, of, of like a 1857 Dred Scott type of thing, right? That effectively the message is certain people are not protected under the law because my politics and my feelings are X, Y, and Z. And so, but to me, that is a particularly dangerous message. It is a throwback to the 1800s uh, and, and past that. And um, it's familiar. I mean, it, it, they just sort of, it's funny, the modern Republican Party just wants to go back in time, you know, by decades. But really what it kind of reminded me of was a little bit of a Dred Scott type of thing, even though, uh, as is pointed out, uh, the victim, Garrett Foster, is white. But this idea that you're not protected under the law uh, because we don't like your politics or we don't like you or we have declared you to be a non-citizen, a non-person, is what's going on here. Oh, absolutely. And so... Um what you have here, Cameron, uh, you have, I mean, this is a man who spent, he didn't spend 20 years in jail. He didn't spend 10. He went to jail last year. But again, he is a hero on the right. Uh, you got Kyle Rittenhouse out here tweeting. Uh, oh, don't, don't think for a second that these uh, racist uh, white conservatives, these MAGA lovers, uh, these folks, uh, oh, 
he is going to be their newest star. Oh, they're going to make him a millionaire. Oh, he's going to be on the speaking circuit. Right. Uh, watch, he's going to be at Turning Point USA Conference. I wouldn't be shocked if they have him introducing somebody at the Republican National Convention. Camera, you're on mute. Y'all got to stop hitting the Sorry mute button. There you go. I, Roland, I was just going to say it's kind of sickening to see how, how how low the governor, Governor Abbott, specifically in Texas, has gone uh, and has gone to, and used his office, uh, the, the state's attorney there, their, their state legislature, just to weaponize. Uh, weaponize their offices to to fully disenfranchise and really make us less than and, and less than humans, uh, black folks, and anything related to supporting uh, black community. There, I, uh, the one thing I will say, especially when you look at uh, Governor Abbott, literally not trying to hide this in any way, shape, or form. This is the kind of information, and this is the kind of stuff we really need to put back to the people of Texas. Texas, uh, as a Lone Star State, and having spent time working and even living in Texas before, it it's people have a sense of pride that don't mess with us. We can govern ourselves. We can we can really stand up, pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and and what's mine is mine and and, and stand our ground. But we're 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 we we've gone too far where People's right to life is less than people's right to care, carry and bear arms. Uh, we've gone too far. And I, I think this is an opportunity, this election and over the next cycles, to really start to remove that that racist legislature, because this doesn't just start with Abbott. This goes all the way down. Like They're protected on so many different levels, from the courts to the legislatures uh, to the governor's offices and so many uh, mayor's offices around the state. Well, look, uh, you got that uh, thug attorney general in Texas, Ken Paxton. This is this what he tweeted. Governor Abbott has just pardoned Sergeant Daniel Perry after a unanimous recommendation by the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles. Americans across the country have been watching this case in Texas and praying for justice after BLM riots terrorized the nation in 2020. Our right to self-defense is enshrined in the Constitution. Soros-backed prosecutors like Jose Garza do not get to pick and choose the rights we have as Americans. And I am relieved that justice has prevailed. They have no, they don't care about his racist text messages. They don't care about his racist language. So we need to be making perfectly clear, and that is Republicans in Texas, Greg Abbott, Kid Paxton, and others, they are in support of a racist white nationalist in Daniel Perry. That's who he is in his own words. I wanted the people of Baltimore to hear it from me. I have done nothing wrong. But I see that what you are trying to do is destroy this black woman for doing her job. I have heard your calls for no justice, no peace. However, your peace is sincerely needed as I work to deliver justice on behalf of Freddie Gray. Maryland was a force to be reckoned with. I was assuming this was all because of Freddie Gray, but it actually is much deeper than that. Baltimore's top prosecutor, a woman named Marilyn Mosby, was indicted yesterday in the Eastern District of Maryland for perjury. Couldn't help but think about Donald Trump. This is what you gotta deal with when you are a black woman fighting for just causes in America. Yeah, it's but just taking, just taking on the police, period. She's stepping on their toes. They wanna cross her out of the system so she can't stand up for the preacher. Reach the pool and grab me and pull me out. Imagine if this were you. You would want people to stand in your corner. I lost my car. I lost my job. I lost my marriage. And I almost lost my mind for a little while. It is so much right now, Lord, and I'm just saying, why are you putting all of this on me? I'm about to break.